Good morning. Today's lecture topic is fibroid. So fibroid is most common benign tumor of the uterus and also most commonest benign solid tumor in tumor. Histologically, this tumor is composed of smooth muscle cell and fibrous connective tissue, so named as uterine dual myoma, myoma, or fibromyoma. Incidence of fibroid. It has estimated that it at least 20% of the women at age of 30 have got fibroid in their uterus. Most of them, 50% are asymptomatic. These are more common in nulliparous or in those women having only one child or in infertile women. The prevalence is highest between 35 to 45 years of age. So risk for risk factor for fibroid in nulliparous obesity and hyperestrogenic women and black women have high risk of fibroid. Why multiparous women and women who smoke have low risk of having fibroid. Histogenesis origin. Usually this is a tumor of smooth muscle cell. Chromosomal abnormality may also cause fibroid. In about 40% of the cases, there is very type of chromosomal abnormality, particularly the chromosome 6 or 7. There is derangement of the chromosome 6 and 7 or sometimes deletion. Role of polypeptide growth factor, epidermal growth factor, insulin-like growth factor 1, transforming growth factor stimulates the growth of myoma either directly or by estrogen. It is predominantly a estrogen dependent tumor. Estrogen and progesterone is main cause of fibroid. Estrogen dependency is evident by it. This tumor usually grow in reproductive age group and there is increased growth during the pregnancy because both of these conditions have high level of the estrogen. They do not occur before the menarche and rarely occur after the menopause. For a menopause, there is cessation of growth and there is no new growth of fibroid at all. It seems to contain more estrogen receptor than the adjacent myometrium, frequently associated with an operation. The growth rate of fibroid is slow and it takes three to five years for the fibroid to grow sufficiently to be palpated per acre. The fibroid grow rapidly during pregnancy or the, those patients who use pills. High dose pills are, risk, are the risk factor for the fibroid. Rapid growth may also be due to degeneration of the fibroid or due to malignant change of the fibroid. Now the type of fibroid. Fibroid may present in the body of the uterus or in cervical region. So this is anatomical classification according to location of the fibroid. If body may present ho sakte or in cervix. In body, it may be interstitial type fibroid, which is the most common type of fibroid, also known as myo-intramural fibroid. It presents inside the muscular layer of the uterus. Subserosum, just beneath the serosa, these are second most common type of fibroid which present in 15% of the patients. And some mucosa type fibroid, these are accounts for 5% of the oil fibroid. These are present just beneath the mucosa. But cervical fibroid may be present in anterior wall, posterior wall, central or lateral. Subserous fibroid may be subserous or may present in broad ligament. These are known as pseudofibroid or wandering fibroid or some mucus fibroid may be sessile or pedunculated. These are known as sub, uh, sub mucus poly or fibroid poly. Now, this is trigo classification of the fibroid. This is also based on the location of the fibroid. S is for some mucus fibroid. O is for other type of fibroid and like this is this is the grade of or category of hybrid fibroid which have which are extended into both endometrium and serosa. So category zero includes 
pedunculated intracavitary fibroids present inside the uterine cavity. Type 1, these fibroids have extension less than 50% of the intramural. Okay, so these fibroids are mainly some mucosal type fibroid but have extension into the intramural part of the cavity, uh, uterus, but this extension is less than 50%. Also, less than 50% of the fibroid is inside the muscular layer. Type 2 submucosal fibroid have more than 50% part is inside the intramural, uh, inside the muscular layer. So, again, the fibroid have more than 50% intramural part. Type 3, it can, can contact endometrium. These fibroids are 100% intramural fibroid. Type 4, these are intramural fibroid, completely intramural fibroid. Type 5, these are sub serous fibroid which have more than 50% intramural form. Type 6 fibroid, these are sub serosal fibroid which have less than 50% intramural form. Type 7 fibroid, these are sub serosal pedunculated fibroid and type A other type of fibroid which are not classified like cervical and parasitic fibroid. Fibroid near myeloma are two to five types of between these fibroid, two to five types of the fibroid are called fibroid neomyeloma because they in they are not located in one layer. They are extended from intramural portion, subserous portion to the submucosal portion of the uterus. Now the fibroid located in the body. The fibroid are mostly located in the body of the uterus and are commonly are and multiple. So these are usually multiple fibroid in case of fibroid present in the body. Multiple fibroid cause distortion of the uterus. The uterine carcass is almost completely replaced by multiple myoma in serous, intramural, and submucosal host. By this picture, you can see this is a picture of multiple fibroid. This fibroid completely is distorted. The uterine uterus shape of the uterus cannot be identified. Interstitial and intramural fibroids are the most common type of the uterine fibroid. These are about 75 to 80% of the all fibroid. Initially, the fibroid, all the fibroid are intramural in location. Subsequently, they go towards the other subserosal, subserous layer or towards the cavity. So they become better on, they become either subserous or submucosal type of the fibroid. Uh, and 70% of the fibroid persists in the same position and it remains the intramural fibroid. Subperitoneal or subserous fibroids, these are accounts for 15% of the all fibroid. The intramural fibroid pushed outward towards the peritoneal cavity the fibroid are either partially or completely covered by the peritoneum. When completely covered by the peritoneum, it usually attains a pedicle. This is these fibroids are called pedunculated subserous fibroid. On rare occasion, the pedicle may be torn or detached from the uterus. The fibroid is attached to other part of the other organ of the peritoneum and get nourishment from the omentum mesenteric addition. These are fibroid cause for wandering or parasitic fibroids. Submucosal type fibroids are rarest among three categories. The, these fibroids are located just beneath the mucosa. When the intramural fibroid goes toward the uterine cavity and lies just under the endometrium, these fibroids are become submucosal fibroid. Pedunculated submucosal fibroid may come out through the cervix and recognized as fibroid poly. It may become infected, ulcerated, which may cause menorrhagia or metrorrhagia. This variety is least common, but it presents the maximum symptoms. So, more towards the cavity, more symptoms are produced by the fibroid. This is a submucosal fibroid polyp. It is sessile. And this one is submucosal fibroid. Cervical fibroid are rare variety of the fibroid. It presents only in 1 to 2 percent case. It may be supracervical. In the supracervical vaginal portion of the cervix, it may be interstitial or subperitoneal variety. And rarely, it may become polypoid. Depending upon the location or position, it may be anterior when 
located at either one of the surface, posterior, lateral, or in center. Pseudo cervical fibroid. A fibroid polyp arising from the body of the uterus when occupies and distends the cervical cavity. These fibroids are called pseudo cervical fibroids. The naked appearance of the fibroid. The uterus is usually enlarged. The shape is distorted by multiple modular growth of the fibroid, but if the single fibroid is present, smaller in size or some using single fibroid, there is no distortion of the shape. Usually there is fibroid, the uterus is enlarged. Occasionally there may be uniform enlargement of the uterus by a single fibroid. As I told you, a single fibroid sometimes not distort the shape of the uterus, especially some mucosal type of fibroid. The equipment of the uterus is formed on cut section of the tumor. This is smooth and whitish in appearance. Cut section in absence of degenerative change, so features of world appearance and trabeculations. These fibroids are surrounded by pulse capsule. This pulse capsule is formed by compression of the adjacent myometrium. They have more parallel arrangement and are pinkish in color in contrast to white appearance of the tumor. The periphery of the tumor is more muscular and have more growth potential. The central of the tumor is least vascular and likely to degenerate. Now, microscopic appearance of the fibroid. The tumor consists of smooth muscle and fibroid connective tissue of varying proportion. It consists of only muscle element, but later fibrous tissue interdigitated with the muscle fibers, or intermingled with the muscle membrane. As such, the nomenclature of fibroid, although commonly used, it is an inappropriate and should better be called as myoma or fibroma. What are the secondary changes take place in the fibroid? There is degenerative changes, atrophy of fibroid, necrosis, infections, vascular changes, and sarcomatous changes. Now, degenerative changes of the fibroid. Hyaline degeneration is the most common type of degeneration. It occurs in 65% of cases. Hyaline degeneration is the most common. It is commonly present in the tumor having no connective tissue. The central part of the tumor, which is least muscular, is common site for the hyaline degeneration. The, the tumor becomes soft, elastic in contrast to the firm feeling of the tumor. On naked eye examination, the cut surface shows a regular homogeneous area with loss of world appearance. Microscopic examination will be hyaline changes of both the muscular and fibrous tissue. Now, cystic degeneration. It occurs following menopause and common in interstitial type of the fibroid. It is formed by duplication of the area with hyaline degeneration. So, previously, there is only degeneration. This hyaline degenerative area undergoes liquefaction and then cystic areas are found inside the tumor. It is lined by irregular ragged walls. The cyst Cystic changes of an isolated fibroid may be confused with ovarian cysts or a pregnancy because tumor is soft and because of any going area of the USC, this cyst can be misguided as a fibroid, may be disguised as ovarian cyst or pregnancy. Fatty degeneration. It is found at or around the new after the menopause. Flat globules are deposited mainly in the muscle cell of the fibroid. Calcium degeneration involves mainly subserous fibroid with a small pedicle or myoma of the post menopausal tumor. It is followed by fatty degeneration. So, where fatty degeneration, later on, calcium will be deposited in this area of the fatty degeneration. Fat precipitation of the calcium carbonate and phosphate occur within the tumor is due to calcific degeneration. When bone of the tumor is converted into a calcific mold, this is called bone stone. Red degeneration or carnesis degeneration. 
It is occur in large fibroid mainly during the second half of the pregnancy and the day that There is partial recovery is possible and such are called necrobiopsis. This is this condition due to pain. The cause is unknown. Naked eye appearance, we can see the tumor so dark area with first section, revealing raw weak appearance, often containing cystic spaces. In this condition, there is fishy odor due to fatty acids. Color is due to presence of hemolyzed red cell and hemoglobin. Microscopically, there is evidence of necrosis. Treatment of this condition is only conservative patient is given painkiller, hydration, and the control of the temperature of antibiotic drugs. Surgery is not required for rare degeneration of the fibroid. Patient presented pain and fever and body malas and sometimes can localize tenderness as a result of rare degeneration of the fibroid. Atrophy. Atrophic changes occur following menopause due to loss of the support from the estrogen. Necrosis, usually circulatory inadequate still may lead to central necrosis of the tumor. Infections are occur because of pain, pain of the bacteria to the tumor go through the thin or slug surface epithelium as in case of some universal fibroid. This usually happens following delivery and emotion when there is raw area. There is open pores and there is in inside the body which favor infection. Vascular changes, dilatation of the vessels, laryngexia, and dilatation of the lymphatic channels. Inside the myeloma, sarcomatous changes are very rare and well presented in 1% of the cases. Usual type of sarcoma is neomyosarcoma. Complication of the fiber. There is degenerative changes of the fibroid, necrosis of the fibroid, infections, sarcomatous changes, torsion of the subcellular coagulated fibroid. There may be hemorrhage. The hemorrhage will be intracapsular. Hemorrhage will be intraperitoneal because of rupture of surface vessel of subcellular fibroid. There may be body cytomia due to resecretion of erythropoietin by the tumor or altered erythropoietin function of the kidney through the uterine pressure. What are the associated changes in pelvic organ? The shape of uterus is distorted and it becomes asymmetrical or sometimes uniform in shape. Uterine tubules, the frequent tubular infection detected in association with fibroid seems to be coincidental. Ovaries, ovaries are usually enlarged, congested, studied with multiple follicles. The cause may be due to hyperdysphagia, the most common follicle. As a follicular tumor, as of the nine follicle associated with barium fibroid, with fibroid is follicular cyst. So this is most common cystic reason associated with the fibroid. Ureter displacement of anatomy of ureter in broad ligament fibroid. The compression effect result in hydroureter and hydrolysis. There may be endometriosis, less increased incidence of pelvic endometriosis and endometriosis associated with the fibroid. Endometrial carcinoma is rarely occur. The incidence is unaffected in case of presence of fibroid. Now the clinical picture of the fibroid. Patients using mediparas and have more period of secondary infertility, early marriage and frequent children may be frequent. High even among the multi parous women. The incidence is at its peak around 35 to 45 years of age. It is a latency of delay. It is a, it is a tendency of delayed menopause. Now, symptoms of the fibroid. You see, in 75% of the cases, there is no symptoms and fibroid is being symptomatic diagnosed only by routine investigation and investigation. Menstrual abnormality may be present. The most common menstrual abnormality is menorrhagia. Menorrhagia is to be increased surface area associated with hyperplasia of the endometrium and macrorrhagia. In, in regular menses, dysmenorrhea may be present. Dysmenorrhea may be primary type or secondary type. 
Second type is usually congestive type is malaria. There may be dyspareunia, there may be infertility, there is pressure symptom because of compression over the bladder and compression over the rectum. There is recurrent pregnancy loss. This, lead, this fibroid during pregnancy lead to miscarriage, preterm liver, and also lead to mild presentations. Lower abdominal or pelvic pain and abdominal enlargement. On general examination, we have varying degree of pain or depending upon the magnitude and duration of the menstrual loss. On upper abdomen examination, the tumor may not be sufficiently enlarged to complete per abdomen. But if enlarged to 14 B hormone, the following features are needed. In partition, we can see the uterus is strong, more towards heart, maybe cystic or cystic degeneration may be present. Usually, margins of the tumors are well defined except at the lower edge, which cannot be really suggestive of pelvic origin of the mass. Surface of the uterus is modular in presence of multiple fibroids, maybe uniformly large in case of single fibroid. Mobility is restricted from above downward, but it is freely mobile from side to side. On percussion, swelling is done on percussion. Pelvic examination, by manual examination, reveal the uterus irregularly and last by the swelling. There, that the swelling is uterine is evident by uterus is not being separated from the swelling. As such, a group is not fed between the fibroid and the mass. Cervix move with movement of the cell, tumor and tumor move with the movement of the cell. What are the causes of symmetrical enlargement of the uterus which form a degree of fiber? So fibroid can be confused with pregnancy, can be confused with a fibroid. Other causes of some last uh, symmetrical enlargement of uterus, some inclusive, intramural, single fibroid, adenomyosis, myohypoplasia, myometra, hematometra, nephiometra, and malignancy. What are the life threatening complications of the fibroid? If a large fibroid patient is having persistent menorrhagia, metrorrhagia, or continuous vaginal, vaginal bleeding, this leads to severe anemia. Severe intraperitoneal hemorrhage due to rupture of the surface vessel in case of subserous fibroid, or severe infection due to peritonitis and septicemia, and sometimes malignant change into sarcoma. These are the life threatening complications of fibroid. How will you investigate and manage a patient of fibroid? So, first, by investigation, we want to confirm our diagnosis and then we want to do pre operative evaluation if we consider the patient for operative intervention. How to confirm the diagnosis? By USC and ultrasound. You try and conclude it's enlarged and distort it. Here is depending upon the amount of connective tissue and smooth muscle proliferation. Fibroid can be echogenic, hypoechoic, or hyperechoic. But usually, usually the fibroid is hypoechoic. Vascularization is present at the periphery of the tumor. Central vascularization in depth indicate degenerative changes of the fibroid. Ultrasound is an useful diagnostic tool to confirm diagnosis of the fibroid. Transvaginal ultrasound can accurately assess the myeloma location, dimension, volume, and also any flexible pathology. Three-dimensional ultrasound can locate fibroid Saline infusion sonography can also help you to detect any intracavitary lesion, like some mucosal fibroid poly. MRI is more accurate compared to the USC. It helps to differentiate between adenomyosis and fibroid. Leproscopy is useful if the fibroid size is less than 12 feet and associated with pelvic pain and infertility. Hysteroscopy detects some mucosal fibroid in unexplained infertility and Due to pregnancy was HSC, when done, if filling defect can be noted. Uterine cure in presence of irregular to detect any who is testing and elementary pathology and also is testing and the 
pattern. The operative assessment. Apart from routine pre operative investigation, intravenous radiography to know the anatomical changes of the immune will be helpful. Fibroid of varying size may be confused with pregnancy. So, this is differential diagnosis of the fibroid. Full bladder adenomyosis, myohyperplasia, ovarian tumor, TO mass, and biometra, metromatra, biometra, metromatra, and other conditions. How to manage a case of fibroid? The management of fibroid depends upon symptoms, age of the patient, fertility of the patient, parity of the patient, and many other factors. Fibroid may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. The symptomatic fibroid required treatment. So medical management is one of the main type of management for the fibroid. The objective of management, medical management, are to improve malaria and to correct anemia before the surgery. To minimize the size and vascularity of the tumor to facilitate the surgery. In selected cases of infertility to facilitate Stroscopic or laparoscopic surgery. To minimize blood loss, we can use anti progesterones like mepapristone, RU486. It is very effective to reduce the size of the fibroid and also decrease the menorrhagia. It may produce amenorrhea. It reduces the size of the fibroid. A daily dose of 25 to 30 mg is recommended for three months. 5 mg daily dose is also very effective. For long term therapy, it should be avoided as it causes endometrial hyperplasia. It is selective for the strong receptor molecule. It can also reduce the volume of the to hybrid cycle because of androgenic side effect, denazole is used only for a short period of three to six months. Denazole administered daily in divided doses in the range of 200 to 400 milligram for three months. Minimize blood loss or even produce amenorrhea by anti androgenic and androgenic agonist action. GNRH agonist. Drug commonly used are gosarelin, buprolarin, gosarelin, and nepharelin. Mechanism of action is sustained pituitary down regulation and suppression of the ovarian function. Optimum duration of the therapy is three months. GNRH agonist like citrolytics, venerelics are can cause immediate suppression of the pituitary and ovaries. Prostaglandin synthetase analog synthetic inhibitor can also be used to relieve the pain due to an associated endometriosis and degeneration of the fibroid. Levonergestrel releasing intrauterine convert uh, the intrauterine system or intrauterine device reduce the blood loss and also the uterine size. However, this is not recommended when the size of uterus is more than 12 feet. What are the advantages of GNRH and other? It improves the menorrhagia and it produces amenorrhea. It improves the anemia. It relieves pressure symptom. It reduces the size of the fibroid when it is used for a period of six months. It also reduces the vascularity of the tumor. It reduces bloodlets during myomectomy. It facilitates leptoscopic and hysteroscopic surgery of the fibroid. What are the disadvantages of using? And analog. Hypoestrogenic side effects are present. This may lead to vasomotor symptoms and loss of the bone density. Decreased bone density. These are very costly. There is regrowth of the myoma on cessation of the therapy. There is degenerative changes. Some fibroid may undergo degeneration, so difficult to identify the plane of the myoma during any patient.
surgical management of the fibroid. Myomectomy is renucleation of myoma from the uterus, leaving behind a potentially pulsing organ capable of future reproduction. Well, what are the indications of myomectomy? Usually, it is done in case of a patient which, have, which are in reproductive age group, don't want hysterectomy and need, and need future fertility. So, persistent uterine bleeding despite medical management, excessive pain, pain or pressure symptoms, size of fibroid more than 12 feet, and women desirous of having a baby, unexplained infertility with distortion of the uterine cavity, recurrent pregnancy vastage due to fibroid, rapidly growing myoma during follow up, sub serious but unmuted fibroid. These fibroid, these are the indication of the myoma. What are the prerequisites for the myomectomy? Hysteroscopic and hysterosalpingography to exclude any submucus or fibroid or polyp or any chimera blockage. Hysteroscopy and endometrial biopsy in case of irregular cycle, not only to remove a polyp but also to exclude endometrial carcinoma. Examination of the husband for fertility point of view. So, a semen analysis of the husband is required before the myomectomy. What are the contraindications of the myomectomy? If the fibroid is infected and if growth of myoma after the menopause, the, uh, if there is growth of myoma after menopause, these patients require hysterectomy because of suspicious malignant changes. If there is suspected malignant changes, if parents women when hysterectomy is safe and is definitive treatment, function lab tubes and hydrosalpins, TO mass, pelvic or endometrial tuberculosis and during pregnancy and during cesarean section. These patients do not, we should not do myomectomy in these patients. Myomectomy can be done by vaginal route. Some mucosal pedunculated myoma can be removed vaginally. Morcellation removal by piecemeal is needed if the fibroid is large. A moderate side fibroid can be removed by twisting. In that case, fibroid is graft with sponge roller and rotated. Endoscopic surgery, stroscopy. Generally, a fibroid of 3 to 4 cm diameter or a polyp is resected between the stroscopy. Pedicle or base of the fibroid is coordinated during surgery by electrocautery. Laparoscopic root of myomectomy, sub serous and intramural fibroid can be removed by laparoscopically. Electrocautery, laser, extracorporals, which are useful for the hemostasis. Laparoscopic surgery is not suitable when the fibroid is very large. Deeply intramural, multiple fibroid, these, in these cases, it is very, the fibroid is inaccessible. Ambular therapy. Uterine artery embolization causes avascular necrosis of the fibroid followed by synthase of the fibroid. Uterine artery are occluded by injecting polyvinyl alcohol particles through the subcutaneous femoral catheterization. So, it improved the menorrhagia in 80 to 90 percent of the cases with 60 percent reduction in the size of the fibroid. What are the complications of uterine artery embolization? Post embolization syndrome, it leads to fever, sepsis. Myomet myometric infarction, necrosis, amoria, and ovarian failure. Contraindication of the mobilization therapy is active pelvic infection, desire of the future fertility, and drug allergy. Hysterectomy is a operation of choice in symptomatic fibroid when the family is completed and there is no valid reason for the myomectomy. The patient over age of 40 years and those not desirous of the future child are, class, are the classical indication for the myomectomy, hysterectomy. Case of vaginal hysterectomy. Vaginal hysterectomy can be done by vaginal group if the fibroid is 10 to 12 weeks size and with associated vaginal prolapse, please 
patients are better deal with the vaginal hysterectomy. Vaginal hysterectomy with repair of pelvic floor is the pelvic floor is the operation of choice. Asymptomatic fibroid are more common as compared to the symptomatic fibroid. And these patients require observation of the no treatment is required in these patients. The indication of expectant management or observation treatment is the size of the fibroid is less than 20. Diagnosis is certain and follow-up of the fibroid is possible during periodic inspection of six months. In expectant management, we usually call the patient at six months of interval for the follow up for USC and evaluation of the further increase or decrease in the size of fibroid. Cervical fibroid. As you know, cervical fibroid are present in one to two percent of the total fibroid patients, and cervical fibroid may present in anterior wall, posterior wall, lateral, and the center of the cervix. You can see this is a picture of anterior wall fibroid. The body of uterus is small. This is a big cervical fibroid which causes compression of the vagina and cervix. The cervix becomes elongated. Now, symptoms in case of fibroid, in case of cervical fibroid, in non pregnant state, the symptoms are prominently due to pressure effect of the surrounding structure. Anterior cervical fibroid cause pressure on the bladder. This leads to bladder symptom like frequency, even retention of the urine. The retention is more common due to pressure than the elongation of the urethra. Posterior fibroid presents tractor symptom in form of constipation. Lateral fibroid cause vascular obstruction. This may lead to hemorrhoids and edema of that. Ureter is pushed to laterally below the fibroid. Central fibroid. Central fibroid with symptoms predominantly related to bladder, like frequency, urgency, and sometimes retention. Treatment. If the fibroid is supravaginal portion, myelotomy may be indicated if the patient is young and desirous of having a baby. The principle is to follow is inflation followed by hysterectomy to minimize the injury to the ureter. Pre-operative GNRH analog administered for children to facilitate surgery. Now, polyp. There are three types of benign polyp, and the polyp may be many. Benign polyp include submucosal polyp, mucus polyp, or endometrial polyp, hybrid polyp, placental polyp. Malignancy may be due to secondary changes of benign polyp. Benign polyp is clinical and tightly referred to tumor or chest by the medical. Some mucus type or mucosal polyp are the most common type of benign polyp. It may arise from the body of the uterus or from the cervix. This factor for the polyp is some mucus polyp is hormonal replacement therapy, tamoxifen therapy, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and increased age of the patient. Pathogenesis. Body, the entire part of the thick endometrial project into the cavity and ultimately attain a medical. Naked eye appearance show a small polyp, polyp size of about 1 to 2 cm, look reddish or is soft. The pedicle may at time be enough to make the polyp protrude from the surface. Microscopically, the core of the some mucus polyp or mucosal polyp contain stromal cells, gland, large thick wall vascular channels. The surface is lined by endometrium. The tip may undergo some mucus hyperplasia. Malignant changes is there, but may coexist with endometrial carcinoma. The pedicle contains thin fibrous tissue with thin. Blood vessels clearly smooth muscle invade the fibroid and then on adenomyomatous problem. Cervical polyp. The polyp mainly arise from the endocervix and rarely from the acrocervix. The stimulus for epithelial growth is due to hyperestrogenism, chronic 
irritation by infection or localized muscular condition. On naked eye openness, through the quality of usually small size, 22 centimeter, these are usually single, red in color. The pedicle may at time be elongated to reach the to reach the quality to the vaginal entrance. Microscopically, the prostoma consists of fibrous connective tissue with numerous small blood vessels and occasional cervical gland. The lining epithelial level is polar like the endocervix. The tip may undergo squamous metaphysia. What are the symptoms in case of mucosal polyp? Usually, this there is no symptoms. The entity is accidentally discovered during per spectrum examination following hysterosalpingography or following hysteroscope or during hysteroscopy. This appear as feeling different. Sometimes patients present with irregular uterine bleeding at the pre-menopausal or post-menopausal. Some patients may present with contact bleeding with the fibroid is situated at or outside the cervix. There may be excessive vaginal discharge, which may be offensive. Multiple endometrial chronic mucus, infertility, or miscarriage in the young age or reproductive history. Now, what are the signs? Unless the fibroid is at or outside the external nose, no positive findings are present. However, if it's produced outside the surface, it is soft, slippery, small in size, reddish in color, and is not attached to the cervical body. It is usually a bead like structure. The fibroid polyp. The fibroid polyp may arise from the body of the uterus or from the surface. The body and fibroid polyp is almost always due to extrusion of the sun mucus fibroid into the uterine cavity. Outside the uterine cavity, during this process, attain a polyp pedicle, which is often broad, usually attached to the posterior wall of the uterus or cervix. The torn and the pseudo capsule are detected at the base of the pedicle. The uterus contract to expel the polyp outside. As a result, the polyp may be pushed out to the cervix to lie even in the vagina. Naked eye press the polyp is usually single, varying in size. There may be evidence of necrosis, infection, and this, especially at the tip. The pedicle is broad. This may be, these may be associated with other varieties of the fibroid. The cervical fibroids. Cervical fibroids usually, usually arise from the ectosurface and from the tip, the tip, the posterior lip. So, survive, uh, fibroid body, cervical fibroid body arise from the ectosurface and usually from the posterior lip. It may be small, usually single. At time, it is big enough to withstand the vagina or even come out. The entritis confusing the diagnosis of uterine infection. Symptoms of cervical fibroid. The patient is usually in reproductive age group, the chief complaints are intermenstrual bleeding, conti often continuous, especially in fibroid polyp arise from the body, polyky abdominal pain due to uterine contraction in a group to the external the polyp out of the uterine can be excessive vaginal discharge, which may be offensive. Sensation of something coming out per vagina when the polyp becoming large and distend the vagina. Sometimes it is asymptomatic. Clinical examination or general examination, there is very need of anemia per vagina. Examination, the uterus is bulky, cervix may be patchless, the tip of the polyp is felt. The polyp is felt distinctly outside the external walls. For a specular examination, relays size, reveals the size and color of the polyp, which is usually pale, may be hemorrhagic, whereas the attachment of the pedicle to the surface may be visualized, but attachment higher up may be at time difficult to locate. Investigation for diagnosis. Transvaginal sonography, the polyp is seen as echogenic mass. Saline infantile sonography, the polyp is seen as echogenic mass, much better as compared to APS. Is better. Transvaginal sonography has no sensitivity for the diagnosis of entire gravidary region. Hysteroscopy to visualize the fibroid polyp and simultaneously polypectomy may be done. Histography to de detect the filling defect in case of fibroid polyps. Examination under anesthesia and exploration of the uterine cavity by fluid or even for the may be helpful in the diagnosis. 
placental polyp. It is rare. It retain bit of the placental tissue when attached to the uterine wall. It organized the surrounding blood clots. Delivered picture. There is history of placental blood clot abortion. Irregular bleeding may be present and offensive regular discharge are really presented to the pregnancy event. Management of polyp. Endometrial polyp can be removed by hysteroscopy or the section and reflection. It can be also removed by uterine tumor using a ring or remote forcep. In case of recurrence, patient who have completed the pelvic stectomy is justified. Cause of recurrence of polyp are incomplete removal, persistence of force leading to polyp formation. Malignancy cervical polyps are removed by twisting the pedicle. The base of pedicle should be cauterized to prevent recurrence. Hysteroscopy is useful to locate the size, position, and base of the polyp. Some members of hybrid polyp can be resected out. Hysteroscopy can be as a outpatient basis. Endometrial polyp that cause infertility, post menopausal bleeding, and non mutant bleeding should be removed hysteroscopically. It is superior, so hysteroscopy is superior as compared to blind abuser. After polyp is removed, endometrial is curated to rule out co existing pathology, which is present in 5% of the cases. Histologically, the polyp may be adenovascular in 80% of the cases, cystic, fibrous, vascular, hypomyomatous. There may be ulceration of the dependent portion of the fibroid malignant changes of the adenovascular polyp is extremely rare, which is presented only 0.5% of the time. Thank you.